Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, no bull video. Lately I had a couple of people asking me to make a video how to clean uh, a SATA heat pump dryer, especially filters. So um, usually I create videos when I spot the problem. Um, and I never had a problem cleaning filters, but obviously if more than one person asking me about that, um, there are some challenges with cleaning. And what I realized is uh, in my previous Samsung dryer, uh, I put a link uh, above when I reviewed Samsung heat pump dryer compared to a SATA, I mentioned that the only difference I see between Samsung and a SATA is Samsung somehow felt it made better. What do I mean better is not right that it's better drying or quieter, it's just the parts, they fit better, they're easier to open, close, they are smoother. And I think why people are asking about um, how to clean a SATA is uh, the parts are quite rough, the way they uh, fit together. And I would say, as almost every single cheaper appliance, um, they don't fit very well. They function well, they're practical, but they're not, I would say they're not engineered well. So um, let's start with uh, the top filter. So uh, almost every heat pump dryer, and especially uh, a SATA a heat pump dryer, have uh, two filters. So why it has two filters? So when uh, clothes are tumbling, the fibers from clothes getting detached or dislodged and they go into, I guess, dryer system. And what is the difference between a heat pump dryer and a normal conventional dryer? Conventional dryer just drives heat in and trying to put moisture out. The heat pump dryer actually works as an air conditioner. And as you know, when you clean air conditioner, there's a lot of dust accumulated by sucking air in. And the biggest reason for heat pump dryer failures, it's bad cleaning. So I suggest everyone clean their heat pump dryers after every single cycle. It's a very small price to pay to keep your dryer in a good shape. So the first filter, which is right here, uh, is take that initial uh, uh, set of particles and try to trap it in. But because it's not enough, there's a secondary filter. So let's start from a top filter. And the way, first of all, to put an uh, extract and put it back. So you can see here, you've got flat surface with another surface, it's kind of on the edge and it's smoother. So a couple of times I noticed that people uh, we're not happy that it's not clear direction how to insert the filter back in. So think of this, the clothes are inside the dryer and they need the smooth surface to uh, come in contact with the filter. And also this side, which is flat one, doesn't have any holes, so it cannot suck air in. And the other part has all the holes, so it's sucking air in. So if you need a smooth surface with the holes need to go in. So when you assemble with that filter, it actually goes with smooth side with the holes in and you basically drop it in until it kind of flushes with the rest of the drum. Well, it's not a drum, it's a plastic casing that basically drum sits behind. So this is how to insert and get filter out. To open the filter, and that's where uh, some of you indicated there's a trouble to, to open the filter, there's a little latch inside here, so by pressing this one in, like firmly pressing and uh, pulling the other one, the top bit out, which is this one, it kind of open in half. And yes, sometimes it's getting stuck, can you see like, like this? So instead of kind of um, forcing it, you kind of wiggle it out until it opens. And as you can see, I've got clean filter, it's ready for tomorrow's operation. But uh, kind of to clean it up, you kind of start collecting on the side the dust you've got here, drag it in. As you drag it, it's like um, uh, works a little bit as a collector. And then another side, what's left in the middle, it's most likely sand because I've got a kid, so he brings a lot of sand from school. 
uh, after playing, but sand or other heavier particles, I suggest after you clean all the soft particles, you kind of shake the filter out. That basically guarantees that not only particles are gone, but uh, uh, soft particles, but also hard ones are stuck in the middle. When you finish, basically close it together and firmly push until it clicks. And both sides as well. So one in the middle and two other sides. Again, push and latch down. And this one up should open at least one side and then you wiggle the other side out. You won't break it. The only thing you can break is the connection in the middle. Be careful because that uh, makes filter just not functional anymore. So that's the top filter again. Smooth side going in, the rough side out. That's the filter here. Now there's another filter. So the air goes in, uh, the particles get trapped there, but micro particles still go through the filter and end up in a secondary filter that protects your actual condenser, uh, heat sink or radiator. That's the bit that most important not to be clogged. So to clean that filter, you kind of press two uh, knobs down, those knobs, right? And there's a two latches here. Uh, let me lower it a little bit. Two latches here. One you need to be pushed down and one need to be pulled up. When you do that, there's a kind of handle here. You know, take it and extract it out. So uh, the dust getting accumulated uh, on the on the protective uh, uh, clothing here. So again, with that uh, uh, build up that you took from here, I usually take it and clean inside there. And of course, the cavity that here and there will be heat sink. I made another video on how to clean heat sink. Uh, the way I clean it, I use my um, uh, Dyson. You don't have to have Dyson, but you probably have a brush like that. So be careful with the radiator things. You basically kind of brushing them in direction they their position. So kind of brushing down. So I think after the whole cleanup, the idea is there will be no visible dust left in the system. So if you didn't see my video on how to clean that uh, radiator or radiator fins, I uh, put it uh, above as well as a link. You can click on it now or later. And the way you, when you finish cleaning this one, you kind of put it back in. And again, one large, you kind of hold it firmly so it won't kind of um, get out. And you pull one latch down and push the other latch up and it's firmly attached and then you kind of click in the door all done so um the another thing that was um a little bit unpredictable but many people uh reporting that's happening to them uh in the instrument cluster here one second you've got um uh full filter and I think another error light somewhere there so sometimes when um, dry cycle finishes for some reason instead of just stopping and indicating that it's all finished uh, it flushes error um, don't worry about error the clothes are dry just uh, empty all the filters um, get the clothes out and that's all so don't worry it's not a fault i think it's uh, i mean maybe it's a fault it's definitely not the future but it's nothing wrong with your dryer and by the way when it happens the dryer definitely finished operation well i hope this video is helpful for those that asked and for those that didn't yet but uh, wondered how to clean internal filter here and the filter that protects a uh, heat sink of the heat pump well, that's all. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to support my channel, please click like, subscribe, and uh, let me know if you would like me to shoot any other videos about any home appliances or kitchen appliances. Thank you so much for watching. Greg from Brisbane, Australia. Until next time.